What's going on, Macro Perspective peeps? Uh, I think this is a uh, news of the nation, is emergency breaking episode. Um, this is being live right now. No, I'm just kidding. This episode is probably going to be a week out after this article, but I think the article has been a few days out. Um, I think this, what we're going to talk about today, Marcos and I, uh, just a shorter episode today, one article we're covering is going to be a great article. It opens up more questions than it does answers, right, Marcos? And what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is lab-grown meat. Marcos, based off of the reading, it's four days old on CNN when it broke uh, from this time of, of, of recording. What, what are some of your thoughts based off of this lab-grown meat article? Well, I mean, the title alone, Meat Without Slaughter. Well. Can't spell slaughter without laughter, right? And maybe this is la laughable. Um, and uh, I mean, so it says everything you need to know about it. So like the the profile, the cost, like they didn't tell you what it's what it is in terms of affordab affordability. Mm -hmm. Get it from the side of like you know, um, <clears throat> like I guess like you're not killing an animal, right? But my first question would be, um, if this is like a produced piece of something, you know, generally when we've what we've run into in our culture is, you know, uh, anything that's like refined, right. Or created tends to have a lower nutrient yield. So mm -hmm. like, I mean, what is the yield is the protein content per serving lower or higher? Uh, what do the macros look like? What are the micronutrients look like? Are they like literally apples to apples because it's again, just, you know, cell division or whatever they're doing to create it. Mm -hmm. not, I mean, like that's not in this article, but I mean, I'm, what about you? I feel like that's the first thing I look at there. Yeah, no, it raised a lot of questions because I, I I read about this 10 years ago, actually. Uh, there's a book by Peter Diamandis. Um, basically, I, for, I forget the name of the book, but basically Peter Diamandis had this conclusion that like technology will solve a lot of humanity's problems. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is like, for example, there's an orange tree. Well, we can't grab the oranges, guys, because we have to climb up the tree. Well, the ladder, the ladder came out then you can now climb the tree and you can grab that orange. So technology solves that problem, whether it's with space, with food and things like this. And even with the new drugs of weight, things like Ozempic, we would talk about like solving problems. This here for me is more of a world perspective. I'm thinking about of what problems would this solve uh, if it was a problem through technology. So technologically, we got to the point that we can make freaking meat. That boggles my mind. That's mm. Freaking wild. Now, we're not making an animal. Um, I know that scientifically, I think cloning is illegal at this time, certain countries or whatever. Um, but it raises a lot more questions for me because, yeah, sure, we're figuring out this meat thing. But is it uh, a few questions that came to mind for me was like, is this true in a sense that it's a nutrient that we can actually really consume? And I go in my head, yeah, we can probably consume it because there's a lot of lab based foods that people buy from the grocery stores right now and technically quote unquote they're healthy or uh, consumable um is it vegan uh was one of my questions and i don't know what line of veganism this might be this is more of like an ethics question of like yeah there's no slaughter but it's technically not an animal that you killed it's from a cell um it was lab made is it how does it go again like with plant-based so there's that and then what's the economics right like economically like I read somewhere and there was like $300,000 to make a piece of meat 10 years ago. Now it's 50 bucks, but a piece of burger is like $5, like really, truly. So you cannot, like all these questions are to me, it just raises more questions than it does go like, okay, cool. Like this is so great. I can't wait for this to, to be you know, part of my day to day, you know? Uh, I can't say that I'm excited. I'm sure it's more expensive at first until they get the cost of it to be affordable than there's really no point, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just more of like, oh, we're... Uh, again, it's like people that maybe looked at the internet and websites as like, there's no way you're going to do business on that in the future. And then it's literally all we use as we're talking, you know, virtually face to face, so to speak, yeah. right? Um, it's a it's an interesting concept. And I think technically it's, you know, it's not vegetarian in the sense like, uh, because it is actually like the cells of that, right? So I guess like, what do you classify as like vegan or vegetarian? And to mm -hmm. me, it's like, obviously it's animal product. So yeah. definitely not vegan, right? Um, 
but I guess vegetarian, yeah, does it does it classify in there? Because you're again, you're not slaughtering animals, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, it's not. I, I don't know. You know, because some of those vegetarians that use eggs or fish or whatever, right? Um, right. Lack always just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I worry about the taste, though. That's like, what I was thinking. You know, like I'm a foodie. I want to. I mean, chicken is generally. No, I guess oh, it tastes like chicken, right? <laughs> like it's generally pretty tasteless. Um, and according to that article, it was like, yeah, basically. Like, what is okay? That's like a gray area. What, basically, what? Basically, tastes like chicken. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. Um, this actually does, you know? Like, I, I would try it just to like get my perception of it, but I don't know. I mean, uh, like what gush, gut issues might present, you know, uh, mm -hmm. does, it, does it look a little bit different as it's going through these developmental stages that we're not able to like digest it fully? Um, you know, does nature have a weird way of like helping that out that we don't know about? It's like, we don't even understand, like, oh, I guess we could use the ocean headline here. We don't even know most of the ocean, right. And animals that exist below a certain level. Right. And, you know, we, we supposedly think the Titanic is however far down, right. Like there was like an yeah. infographic to show that. And, you know, then they, try to go use a sub to look for it in an area where there is no light, which makes total sense. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know, man, like this is, this is something that's interesting, but you know, the crazy thing is like, it's already been approved for use. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> They're going to have their Michelin star restaurants first, I believe, or something like that. Um, look, I'll try anything once. I'll, I'll try anything once and kind of, kind of give it a shot. And, um, uh, you know, if, if it's already approved, then there's no backside. There's no, there's no acute response to it, like, right away. Um, I'll give it a shot. If you sauce it up a little bit, put some A1 steak sauce, Worcestershire, <laughs> something. Um, true. I would also know, knowingly, when I'm eating it, know that it's like a, is it, it's an inferior meat, quote unquote, fake, because you know, you're, you're being served up on a platter, uh, knowing that it's, it's lab grown. But then again, it kind of just goes into that arg argument. I think you said it yourself earlier is like, you know, the internet at some point people were laughing about it. And it's the same thing with different markets, like, uh, diamonds, for example, there's diamonds that are nature and then there's people that lab grow diamonds and people still purchase them. So there has to be, there's a reason why it's being approved. There has to be a market for it. And there has to be people that are willing to do it. And I bet you at some point it can become so lucrative, right? Um, and people were saying in that article, like, oh, it'll probably serve, serve like world hunger issues. Like, well, if the cost effectiveness of it is good, if, if, if we can import and export it and have it grown in labs that are people are willing to do. And that then comes an ethics question of like, if people want to lab grow things, um, cause that's almost borderline like making life. Um, I don't know. So it, as a scientist, like I try to take my ethics out of it a little bit just because I'm just looking at it from a science lens, but from like a human, humanistic perspective, I don't know how humans will feel about controlling things like quote unquote God or a higher power or something like that. <laughs> Man's thirst for conquer is something that's unquenchable. My friend, you cannot change man. Man will continue to do things that men do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with all that, oh man, can you hear that in the background? <laughs> Just a little bit, but you're okay. Okay. Um, so there's a vacuum running. Sorry guys. Um, <laughs> the, I think the biggest thing to, um, look at and recognize here is it's, <sighs> It's a regulatory agency that is done by the government and uh, there's more as literally my mom just sent me an article as we're on this right about another thing that the government squandered right so we're really going to put our hands and faith into the fda in terms of understanding food behaviors where again a lot of things are bought and paid for right yeah okay so i mean literally the article she sent me as we're talking about another article is more than 200 billion dollars in pandemic aid relief was potentially squandered by our yours truly the government right yeah. um and uh yeah that it it became something again like who's responsible if the outcome is something that was undesirable are we gonna have more of those like you know uh ambulance chaser type people they're like hey by the way you're going to be getting your hands on x amount of dollars in this class action lawsuit 
because blah 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 blah. Right? It's We've gonna open them. more of that. It's gonna open more of that for sure. Yeah. You you and a loved one were affected by mesothelioma, right? Because you were exposed to asbestos, one of the hardest known substances that breaks off and then just gets into your lungs, right? Like, I mean, we've all heard this before. Anybody that's in our generation probably knows that commercial, you know, and also that voice. Yeah. Mesothelioma, yeah. right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like that word is like almost as contagious as fucking rhabdomyolysis, you know, with CrossFit, you know? <laughs> Rhabdo. The, the <laughs> rhabdo clown. No, I, I think you make a point here where – there, people will have an initiative and men, hum, humanity will try to do some very niche things that are very like provocative in a sense of like, oh, we're, we're on a new frontier of science. But you're right. Dude, we just had $200 billion of funding to the government. We don't necessarily know where that funding is kind of going. And we're doing things that aren't necessarily solving other problems. We're just trying these new niche things. So, I mean, there's always going to be drawbacks and there's always going to be you know, pull back on all this stuff because there's problems in all sectors, right? They're the homeless, uh, you know, lack of food, uh, you know, um, the government in arms races, uh, the freaking war in Ukraine, like all, there's always going to be like humanitarians talking about certain things. So this is, it's, this topic here will hit all that economically. It'll hit it politically. It'll hit it religiously. Th this lab grown meat thing, it's as much as it stems from science, it will be, it will be speared through by many different schools of thoughts, you know? I mean, dude, it could be as good of an invention as fucking whey protein powder, whey isolate and whey hydro isolate. And it gives you the mouthfeel of things that, again, and can be created. Maybe they get it so freaking lean that's basically like a chicken crisp isolate that literally turns into like the perfect like chip texture and crunch. And now, again, like you have a better form of like those wild chips. Like, I'm not knocking it. I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not even concerned. I'm just interested to see where it leads. Like you said, it's more of like we're pioneering into a new frontier. Are we ready for it? We, we are. It's, it's, it's weird that like just in the news cycle in the last six months alone, I don't know what's going on in 2023, but it just seems like the news cycle is very much as how I'm seeing it with health and health wellness and stuff. There's a lot of things in the frontier that have never been seen before. Weight loss drugs that we've talked about numerous times, right? Uh, heart issues in America that are like weird or even this lab grown thing. We're on a new frontier where we have what we call an answer to our problems, right? Uh, Overweight. Okay, cool. Try Ozempic. Oh, you're having heart issues? Don't worry. Your cardiovascular uh, Mayo Clinic says, don't worry, you might have an issue with like certain things or uh, with me, don't worry, we're going to figure it out for you. So the concept there is like instant gratification, right? Health and wellness is getting to a point where it, in the articles that I've been reading, everything will have an answer in the short term with your health um, and meat being one of them. I don't know exactly how it's going to answer the health or maybe it's going to answer a protein issue. It's going to answer a you know, lack of eating for certain people. Um, but with that being said, instant gratification usually is a band-aid for a long-term problem, right? Sure, you can go ahead and lose weight 12 weeks with a performance health coach like us and you lose 20 pounds. Or you can say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to take $50,000 and do a liposuction and get it for, you know, 50 pounds off of fat. Sure, the liposuction, you're done in a few hours, you're, you've lost the weight, but you never fix the problem. So I don't know what problems may come from having instant meat, from lab-grown meat. Um, again, I'm not docking it, but I want to see how it plays out because we're seeing that now with our obesity crisis and all these other crises is that like, hmm. It's playing out differently than we thought, right? It's playing out differently in the econ economics. It's playing out differently uh, with people's biology. So, yeah, man, I, it's it's again a new frontier. It's gonna stem new. It's gonna stem new storylines that we've never thought of before. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. I mean, to wrap this up, maybe let's make a pros and cons list of you know of this idea. Go ahead. Um, yeah. And I'll do a pro first. So first pro I can think of is. I mean, affordability of protein as it scales um, for underserved communities, probably yeah. a pro. Con being, um, 
uh, again, not being in the market long enough to really truly understand um, health ramifications, though we're under the guise of protein, right? So like while it's a pro, it could be a con because we don't have evidence of what it does quite yet. Yeah. Um, a pro, I would say, is it's definitely going to be a game changer for scientists and what they can do in terms of labs and what they can do for jobs. A con is the same thing for the farmer economy. Maybe uh, it affects them so hard that like farming becomes inessential. I don't know. That's just swinging to the right too far. I don't know. <laughs> that, well, okay. Well, to counter that, a pro might be that it actually gives more uh, – human jobs because you need someone to like cultivate these things much like a farmer. So maybe it's a modern day farmer. And then mm. the con is that you might like relinquish a complete industry such as farming or people that are, again, that are, aren't crop farmers. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know, are they generally growing meat and also being a, a farmer like with, 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 uh, at the same time? I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not experienced enough in there. So, I mean, maybe it's a pro and a con cause it could be new job opportunities because it needs to be like, you know, if someone double checking it for quality and doing those things, but then again, maybe AI steps in and just says, F you guys, this is a completely automated process. From <laughs> yeah, the automate this. We could do it. <laughs> we could spider web this thing. Um, yeah, another pro would be like, um, like if it's just in America, I think America can then be self sufficient in what it does, like as a imports, exports kind of thing. The con would be then we wouldn't be a world. Uh, if, if we're just self-sustaining, how are we playing with the world in terms of our imports, exports? Like, are we not taking things in anymore or does that shut us off from the world? Uh, these are just weird, very esoteric questions, but th these are things that like economics, you know, economics that can be very uh, down the line uh, nefarious, you know, very nefarious over time. Mm. Let's see if I can come up with a little more pro. Pro would be... Again, venturing into like new new uncharted territories with like ideas of technology, um, maybe this is a way to replicate uh, a lost limb for somebody through the the sequencing, right? Yeah. So maybe there's a way like they're actually growing like muscle and tissue. So there's like a way to like actually help like a burn victim or somebody else that's lost like different different things. Um, maybe it helps like a wounded veteran um, be able to have the ability to walk with the, her own leg versus uh you know that. Um, but again, the con might be like. Um, this is the one I thought of too, is like much like anything else that gets kind of pushed in a consumer sense, right? Like does more availability for things actually make things better, right? Does it, you know, and again, like, does it become like, like a part of, a part of government subsidies and then people just never have to do anything. And then I worry about psychological things over like, you know, physical things. Yeah. Um, last one for me, I mean, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off this, but like religious, um, I think maybe it might be a pro. Um, I don't know what the pro would be in a religious connotation, but maybe a con would be like, I know certain groups are against me, so that might nestle up more violence or, you know, trepidation with that, those groups, uh, religious groups. How do we I think someone asked, like, how does this happen if you're trying to keep kosher or like do these get blessed by a rabbi or something um there's, there's just a lot of questions in, in that end so i mean it it this is unprecedented i'm just being honest like it, the reason we're making this episode for you guys is because it, this is unprecedented it's not just it's not just like oh they made some lab grown meat what a stupid idea no this might literally pivot economics this literally might pivot human beings in certain ways not today maybe not in our lifetime but it might get to a point where this is how the world is run and um i, I don't think it's a far stretch just because of the fact that like with convenience and with science literally if you're talking about it in a capitalistic sense economically if it will make sense one day i bet you people one day it's just they eat meat like that because economically it just makes sense it's convenient it's easy to do sustainable whatever I mean, that other thing with the religion, it might be a pro because all the organizations agree they're not killing an animal. Yeah. They're purely like reinventing it in a way that can be eaten. And so then it actually opens up people that were, you know, um, vegetarian or, you know, more, um, what's the word? More, more, um, again, like because they, again, like the hood of the animals and things like that for, like Judaism or again, whatever the other religions believe. I don't know all of them offhand, but again, it allows them the opportunity to taste pork, bacon, 
beef. I don't know. Like things that were off the table before. So I mean, that's inch, it's so many interesting questions, but guess what? They're not going to find the answers to it in their, in the book of God. Unfortunately, that's going to be purely a, uh, a human decision on whether or not they believe they, that this should be something that they include given scientific advancements. And I don't know, maybe Scientologists get behind it because it's in the name. <laughs> Even though yeah, I don't know, man. I, uh... things, but yeah. Anyways, guys, um, the, the, we can keep going down this rabbit hole and play so much and we can hit it from 50 different angles, but do us a favor. Like we're going to try to do more episodes like this on different, uh, articles that are coming out. Cause it just seems like the news cycle is coming out with so many like fresh things that are, they're here. The things that people think are from world, uh, like, uh, science fiction is kind of, this is the beginning of a lot of that stuff. AI happened eight months ago. Uh, weight loss drugs come to the point that it's going to fix obesity. We have lab grown meats, you know, whatever. So we're here to kind of speak about it from the forefront. And I think we want to speak about this a little bit more. So guys, do us a favor, comment below. If you like that, if you want to talk about it, if you guys want to yeah. kind of have a conversation, let's do it because articles that you might recommend yeah. that you know, deserve some talking points or, you know, maybe you want to come on and talk about something because you have a interesting take on an idea. We are totally open to that. We're always looking for new avenues to explore and deeper perspective, right? Yeah. And and the whole point here with the macro perspective is there is no bias from both of us. I mean, there is the bias that we bring in here because of our backgrounds, but we try to just be open-minded about it and just question it. And as you can see here, I think we had more questions coming out of this than answers for you. Um, we're just re reporting the news as it is, but this is how our minds think. I don't, I don't, Marcos and I don't think like anything is a definitive. It's just, it depends. And we just want to see how it plays out. And, you know, every day is a new day with, with content, with new knowledge. And it, it it's all up inter for interpretation, you know? So. Agreed, man. Well, everybody, like Seamus said, drop a comment, a like, maybe some pros and cons that you thought that you got to thinking of that we didn't touch on include it below um and let us know because well, again we're intrigued we think this again could be good bad ugly we don't know um but we're you know we'll, we'll probably do another episode in six months like we did when we did our initial weight loss drug one too so um you know times are always changing things are evolving at a very rapid rate hell like again i'm our assistant bought a computer two years ago and I had to buy a new one because um, guess what? Like technology gets dated that quick. So just like these things in the news article, they come around and they get dated very quickly. So um, thanks again for listening and we will see you next time.